All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar for Wharton Customer Analytics Datathon with Essity. We'd like to thank all of you for attending uh, today's webinar. Um, the webinar today will focus on um, the logistics of the next week. We'll talk with um, Gustav from Essity about uh, what the business challenge is, and we'll discuss the data. We'll discuss the um, accessing the data, signing your data user agreement, how you'll submit your uh, final deliverable, and also discuss the final presentations. And uh, Essity has generously offered some really great uh, financial prizes for the winners of the Datathon, and we'll cover that as well. So this is us, Wharton Customer Analytics. We are a research center uh, housed within the Wharton School. My name is Matt Gray. I'm also being joined today by uh, Brandon Krakowski, Nicole Wang-Trexler, and Maddie Lasser. So in, in this slide here, we're just gonna cover the Datathon timeline. Today is the webinar where teams and teams will be given access to the data in Canvas. Uh, we will also be hosting office hours with our technical assistant. You can see the dates and times uh, posted. Final deliverables will be uh, due to work customer analytics via dev post. Uh, the final presentations should be um, just under 10 minutes. We're thinking about seven to eight minutes would be appropriate. Uh, the winners will select uh, will be selected from the judges panel made up of both uh, leadership from Essity as well as Wharton Customer Analytics. We will notify uh, all teams by five o'clock on uh, February 4th, and then winners will be announced at 2 p.m. And uh, as I just mentioned, there will be uh, gift cards that will be given to the first, second, and third place teams. Now I'm going to turn it over to Gustav, who's going to talk about Essity. Yes, now I'm unmuted. Hi, everyone. So welcome to the Datathon. And uh, I'm going to present a bit about SDG uh, in general. And then we talk about uh, what we're doing for this Datathon. So SDG is a leading global hygiene and health company. Uh, our motto or, or vision is that we should dedicate the improving and well-being to leading hygiene and health solutions. Uh, the main contact for this project within SAP is me, so I'm the project manager for this. Uh, it's Eric Flood, who is the director of business transformation, and he's also my boss. Uh, we have Hao Chen Chan, uh, who is a data scientist, so he has prepared some of the stuff that you're going to work with. And Hector Rodriguez, who is the IT business analyst, he has mainly helped with uh, getting and formatting the data that you will also work with going forward. So, as to be then, we are a leading global hygiene and health company, like I said. Uh, it's a Swedish company, uh, and during 2019, uh, our net sales was 129 uh, billion sec. In US dollars, that's around, I think, 16 billion dollars. Uh, we are selling our products in approximately 150 countries. Uh, it goes up and down from year to year, but uh, somewhere around that. We are also around 46,000 employees uh, all over the world. And um, as you can see here on the right side, we're selling all kinds of stuff. Uh, we're selling uh, baby diapers, uh, toilet paper, things that have to do with hygiene, both uh, on a consumer level and on a professional level. And now we're going to watch a short movie about the datathon and uh, why we at SD is doing this. Mobile Director for Services and Solutions at Essity. 
SNA is one of the leading global brands for health and hygiene around the world, with more than 48,000 employees and servicing the well-being needs and customers in more than 150 countries. The Twerk brand, the brand that I work for, is the leading professional hygiene brand around the world, with products and services that you're all familiar with. Products like napkins, hand towels, skincare, including soap and sanitizer, toilet paper, or dispensers, you've probably seen them across the walls, all over the place. Our customers, you're also very familiar with. Customers like Dunkin' Donuts, The Link, watching an Eagles game, Wawa, I'm sure you guys have all gone there for a midnight snack. Um, those are some of the customers that we service. Essity has always been essential for improving the well-being of our customers. But now, more than ever, hygiene has become even more important to protect the ones we love the most. As businesses reopen, our customers rely on Torque EZQ to help them to navigate these new hygiene standards, to navigate this new norm. Torque EZQ is our data-driven cleaning service, providing customers with access to real-time data on consumption as well as traffic flows. With this information, they know exactly where and when cleaning needed the most. This allows them to redirect cleaners to high-risk or high-touch areas and ensuring that they're able to adhere to the higher hygiene protocols necessary during this moment. Additionally, thanks to Torque EC Cube and consumption data, they're able to ensure that all the washrooms are fully stocked with product so customers and guests feel safe, that they're being taken care of, and they always have hygiene products available. Take a look at this video to see how Torque Easy Cube is really making an impact on our customers' lives. Cleaning makes use of digital technologies and advanced connectivity, allowing the industry to innovate and adopt new ways of working. Indirect cleaning uh, will have a dramatic impact both on productivity and quality of uh, cleaning operations because it makes it much easier for you to allocate resources to a business manager. Data-driven cleaning enables businesses to access real-time data and make the right decisions, no matter the complexity of the facility. Unnecessary cleaning tasks disappear, and managers can be reassured that no over or under cleaning takes place. The idea is not to replace cleaners, it's to help them. Uh, the system should be there for cleaners and not the other way around. Data-driven cleaning enables businesses to deliver higher quality more effectively and achieve consistently high customer satisfaction for the services provided. And crucially, it enables the people who use it to work smarter, feel less stressed, and have a more balanced working situation. Independent cleaning already changes the rules of the game. It redefines what the cleaning is all about. This fall, we're looking for your best and brightest ideas for a real-world technology challenge. You'll be able to analyze data from sensors and SD dispensers to provide real insights and recommendations on areas such as product development, on operations, on claims, customer segmentation, and customer profiling. We're thrilled to be part of the Wharton Data Analytics Datathon, and we would love for you to take part in our challenge. By participating in our challenge, you'll be able to stretch your imagination to learn more about the leading health and hygiene products that SAE has, and more importantly, to work on something that can really make an impact on the health and hygiene of the people in the community that we love the most. Thanks. Yes, uh, like my colleague just said, uh, I work within SAP. We have a, a three different business units, and the one that I work for is uh, professional hygiene. Uh, we are also a global leader, and our brand is called Torque, and that is something maybe you have at least heard about. SAP isn't too well known, I would say, but Torque you would see in just like Charisse may have said, in the toilet, at the restaurant, or anywhere where you go and you need some sort of uh, hygiene uh, product to wipe your hands, uh, clean your hands, etc. 
And also like she uh, presented in the video, we also offer digital solutions. So one of those is uh, the EasyCube solution, which uses these uh, Internet of Things sensors. Uh, professional hygiene is, like I said, one uh, or out of three business units, and our net sales 2019 was 31 billion. So divide that by eight roughly, and you get the US dollar. So. Yes, so about the actual data on them. Uh, uh, what you saw in the, in the movie before uh, was the system that we call Torque Easy Cube. Uh, it is a, a IoT solution that uses sensors within the washroom to gather data on uh, things like consumption of products within dispensers and soap uh, dispensers. Uh, it also uh, gathers information on the amount of people going in and out of, of uh, the uh, washroom or toilet. Uh, we have been running this product or selling this product to customers for a bit more than five years now. And they mainly use it to be more effective uh, in their cleaning, but also they can use it to increase quality. Uh, and in general, it can help them in other ways as well. For example, having staff being more uh, happy with their job because they can take uh, own decisions and, and work with their own schedule more or less. Uh, it's a subscription service. Uh, we sell it directly to end customers. Uh, and we also have some additional features apart from only the sensors. So uh, we have a customer feedback uh, where you, you, know, you, you press the happy face, the sad face, if you're happy or not with the cleaning or the situation in the washroom. Uh, we have some messaging uh, uh, components and APIs and other things. And what we would like to get out of this data phone is to understand or for you to find some sort of untapped value that uh, exists within the data that the system has collected over uh, all these years, uh, you will get actually access to one year of data, but um, and, and the 15 biggest customers. But the idea is for you to discover, explore, uh, use your imagination and your uh, abilities uh, to pinpoint or expand on or find things that could actually add value to our business. Uh, And we are looking for value within some sort of uh, themes, uh, just to give you a direction. So the first area where we're looking for these insights or uh, value propositions is within customer insights. What can we, what kind of conclusions can we draw from the customers? Uh, are there some attributes that indicate that this is a successful customer compared to someone else? Can we do some sort of benchmarking? Uh, are there potential to sell even more services or products um, to a specific customer based on what you can find in the data? Those kind of things are what we're interested in that area. Uh, and for products, it's about improving the product that we're selling or the service that we're selling. Um, can we, for example, use the data to do predictions of cleaning? Uh, can we use uh, the sensors and the data to indicate things that maybe are interesting now or in COVID? I mean, is there someone in the washroom uh, right now? Should I go in there? Should I not go in there? Uh, can we see if a cleaner has been, uh, has been at a specific spot, location, and done the cleaning? Things uh, similar to that. Uh, on the claims part, it would be interesting to, to see if can we indicate how much or uh, can we limit the amount of waste that is happening, uh, for example. So, you know, a cleaner goes in there. Uh, if there's a bit of paper still on the roll, should they change the roll or should they uh, leave it and come back at a later point in time? Uh, other things we can look at are like proof points, attributes um, that we can use to sort of sell our solution. For example, uh, we can see that uh, the availability of product in a certain dispenser uh, reaches a certain uh, threshold or something like that. 
And then operations. Uh, of course, this is a system. We have sensors installed. There is physical hardware. It will need maintenance from time to time. So it would be very interesting to understand is there a way to see in the data if, for example, we need to swap the battery? Can we predict that? And we can better plan where we're going. We could uh, make it more effective for us as a company to run this service. And there's also a, an idea around the, the locations uh, because the, the system is built around building a location tree of all the places where we go to clean and change products. So maybe there's an opportunity to, to have some sort of automated optimization of that tree. Uh, yep. So that, those are the ideas that we have. So like I briefly said before, we will provide you with one year of data. So it's more or less for 2019, as we had this uh, COVID situation, which I guess all of you are very much aware of. Uh, we're selected to use data from 2019, so it's not as skewed as it is because as, a, as professional hygiene, we're selling more or less exclusively to, to companies like offices, uh, industry, and a lot of those uh, have been closed down all over the world. So we, the idea was that we, during 2019, we had a more uh, realistic pattern of usage and, and uh, you know, the results were, were used in a normal fashion. We had vacation as normal and people went to their jobs and their offices and amusement parks and so on. Uh, these are the 15 biggest customers that we had in the system during 2019. Uh, they have a lot of locations, a lot of sensors, and a lot, uh, some of them they have been using a lot of refills and products and stuff as well, which you will see when you start to dig into it. We will provide the data and full documentation uh, to you guys. And we will also, there's also some sample code, how to load the data, how you join the different entities. Uh, it's also provided in documentation. So you should be quite good to go. Uh, and we try to make that part of it as simple and lean as possible. Awesome. Thank you. So now come to how to access the data. And so as you can see at here, the data and full documentation will be provided via the Microsoft Teams SAT workspace. And uh, Gustav has just confirmed with us that all of you should have access into the Microsoft Teams. And then once you're being added to the team, access the start package in the files view, and then it contains all the data and the sample code. And then at here is about how to how to sign the DUA. So the data user agreement, as you can see at here, it's very important. It's and kind of talk about how uh, you will have the access to the data, and then you you are allowed to to use the data, etc. So you can find that in the data sound folder as well. And then and once you download to the file, please sign it. And then also please just save it in the signed DUAs folder. And then as here, it's about the terms. It's talk about please do not share or discuss the data and, and the data details with anyone who are not participating in the data sum and you should delete all of the data files at the end of the data sum. In terms of the, the, in terms of the deliverables, the students of you should submit a video, rec a video recording of your, of your presentation that is up to eight minutes in length, and then your presentation slide deck all, and if you have any data visualizations, please also uh, submit it in there as well, and also off the code. And then all of the materials, please uh, submit them into dev post by 7 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday, February the 4th for judging. In terms of the presentation and the judging criteria, 
the final the finalist presentation will be held virtually on the Friday of February the fifth, and then we will notify the teams of their presentation slot by five p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, February the fourth. The sponsor will consider several um, indications for the judging that is on the potential the potential value to be created along with how creative and how complex of any of the solutions. You are all encouraged to consider the credibility and the ease of implementation of any approach. So, the, so in terms of the judging, the student teams will be judged on the following. One is the quality of the approach and methodology. One is the analysis of the results and the potential business impact. One is the ease of the implementation. And last is the translation and presentation of the results to the audience. And here is an overview of all of the judges panel that consists of SD and our team. So at here, it, it demonstrates the best practices for the success. So we highly recommend you to get started right away. So to test the data immediately and let us know if you need any assistance and also here are the recommended process and the timeline, which is to explore and to learn the data and then to identify the goals and then to come up with different kind of the hypothesis and then write code and then build your models and then at the end to create your final presentation and ask any questions in, in the data form or at the office hour. And here we provided two live virtual office hours. One is on the February 1st, that is from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern timeline. And another is on the February the 3rd from 8 to 9 a.m. also in Eastern timeline. And also in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can also reach out to us via Teams. So that's it. And thank you so much. We are also open for questions. Um, I have a quick question. So for the, the DOA agreement, all of that, should everyone in the team submit their own individual files or like we do it as a one team? Yeah, you'll want to submit those individually. Each each student will sign and upload their own uh, data user agreement. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have a quick question. So do you know what's the password we're supposed to enter for the Microsoft Teams? We try like Panky. Um, and email password, but all filled. Um, if it's tied to your university email address, that's how you were invited, then it's probably going to be your, um, your office, uh, 365 password. If you have any issues, go ahead and just, uh, email us and we can Okay. Follow up individually with um, with those of you who are having any issues uh, logging in. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I see one question coming from the chat. I think uh, that um, Gustav might be able to answer. That is that one team choose one team among the five. Yeah, I think that the idea was that you 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 choose or select one of them uh, and work on that one. Uh, you can select whatever you want. I think that it will be. I mean, if you're able to do more than one, that uh, would be fantastic as well. But I think that doing one would be more than enough. I, I don't know what you think, Brandon. Yeah, I think one theme is sufficient to focus on. Uh, you know, per team. 
ครับนั่นเอง If anyone's having any issues uh, connecting to Teams, go ahead and just um, follow up with us uh, using the email address on this slide. Yep. And maybe most importantly, that we haven't said, but this should be fun as well. So <laughs> hopefully, you you feel that this is fun and it's a, it's an exercise, and let's see what you find. Uh, I think that's very important. I see another question out here. It says about the quality of approach and the methodology. Can you give us an example? Yeah, so quality of approach and methodology, the idea is that um, does the approach make sense, right? Is what you're kind of uh, presenting, is that, does it actually make sense for the theme that you're focusing on? And um, Does it answer the questions? Does the method that you're coming up with or using, does it make sense? And does it answer the questions that you're focusing on within that theme? And Gustav, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but that's... that's uh, yeah, I, I agree. Can you can you follow the, the, the logical path that you have been following? Uh, does that correspond to the, the result or the idea that you come up with? So I think it's... If you have a step-by-step -step approach and, and it's easy to understand uh, why you got where you got and how you got there, I, I think that's more than enough on that part. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have final round of questions? Well, if not, um, on behalf of SD and also WCA, I want to say thank you so much for joining the webinar and we look forward to learning about your code and your presentation. Thank you, everyone. Have fun. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Bye.